Hello aquatics fans. I'm going to bring you a video today on how to strip a female African cichlid. This, as you can see this here is a yellowtail acai and she is holding eggs I do believe because as she's done the definite mouth bloating for the last couple of days and whenever I fed the rest of the tank she didn't bother to eat. She'd swim up to the top, act like she wants to eat, but just swim back to the bottom or go hide knowing that she can't eat with them eggs in her mouth. So therefore I'm going to help her out and I'm going to go ahead and strip the eggs out of her let her resume normalcy and hopefully in another 30, 45 days she'll be ready to have more eggs. Now the only thing you need for this of course is the female holding and a simple breeding uh, egg tumbler like this this is one I picked up off eBay I don't even know what brand or anything it is but all you got to do is once you have the eggs put in here I'm going to put them in this 20 gallon tank here it's 20 long and we'll attach it to this air pump uh, as you can see it's 20 long only has a little few little guppy babies in there and some cherry shrimp and some baby uh, bristle nose plecos so shouldn't be anything there that will really mess with the tumbling process keep it in there enough current in there and not allow it to fungus up because if you don't have enough power to these or the tumble's not enough on the eggs they will fungus up I've unfortunately had that happen a couple of times so anyway first step you want to do once you I've already pre-caught her so you guys end up seeing me catch her I put her in a little one quart two quart tub whatever this is a little sterilized tub get her in there I've given her a little time to calm down from being caught because you know, that was stressful for her here where I can get a good angle. Okay, first thing you want to do is you just want to get your hand, put a little water on it so you don't damage her when you pick her up. Feed her here. Just gently pick her up. Of course she's not going to like it. Come on. After a second she'll calm down. See, she's a beautiful female, lots of color. And I just take, if you tickle her, some people pry their mouths open. I don't like to do that. If you just kind of tickle her throat a little bit, just kind of press her mouth open. Eventually, she'll start spitting the eggs. Let's see if we can see them in there. Oh, okay, okay. Said. Some people will take a little piece of metal or something, piece of plastic, pry her mouth open. It does hasten the process, but to me it's not necessary. Unless she's not cooperating, unless she's not wanting to. Wow. Come on. There we go. See that one coming out there? Oh, yellow spot there. Come on, you can do it. This process might take a little bit longer, but it's a lot less cruel to me. Come on, just give me the eggs. So you just kind of tickle her mouth a little bit. Eventually she'll start spitting them. There we go. There we go. Can you see all those eggs coming out of there? Lots of eggs. Now these will tumble for several weeks and eventually they will just become babies. There we go, spitting them all out now. I have several that are ready to, already halfway grown that I've gotten from her. I feel like that's all. Oh, oh. <laughs> Alright, just give her a break for a second. So obviously that's pretty stressful on her. I can see a few of those already doesn't look like they have uh looks like they didn't get fertilized. They're broken in half. 
see there are several eggs there, several there. I'm going to give her a second, let her calm down a little bit and see if there's any more in there. Didn't really feel much like there was too many more in there. Finish up, baby. Yep, I can see a few more in there. She's just being stubborn. There we go. Jump. Get a good look in there. It looks like there's still a few more. The important thing to do is to just be as gentle as possible doing this so you don't hurt her gills. She's got a few in there. I might just about letting her get those out natural because like I said I can see them she's not spitting them all right I might just pour out a few days up there a few days here and for the purpose of the videos I'm gonna go put her back in the tank now go free calm down all right now, what you want to do with this, the tumbler here, as you see I've got several cords back there, I'm not a real big worry about painting my tanks kind of guy, I don't, think I don't have a lot of time to do stuff like that, so just open the lid here. Anything about these tumblers? Seems like they come with little, nice little suction cups, so you don't have to worry about put the thing floating around. And it comes off. The lid comes off here. It's like basically like I think three pieces. You got here. You got where the air comes in. You got an air stone in there, and it blows down into here. And you can see you've got a little chamber there, a little block to block this chamber. Block the egg chamber to keep them. And you got a sponge and another little piece of plastic with holes in it. Same here. That's where the eggs stay in. They stay in tumble in there. Um, you want to go ahead and put it in the water. This piece so the eggs stay as dry as possible. I do got a little duckweed in this tank, so I'm just trying to sneak down in there. All right. Obviously, you want to try not to let the eggs stay out of water for as long as possible. Now, there was one other little thing you'll need. That was your handy dandy turkey baster. And you can just take, pull these eggs out, suck them up into your turkey baster. Up so they don't. That'd probably be better. Sorry about that. For some reason, I hit the pause button. Anyway, you want to raise it up here so where your eggs can't swim, fall out of the water. That way, I have the rim above the the top of the thing above the rim. So. Eggs are going to go all down in there. And it looks like probably a good 30, 40 eggs or so in here, which is a good amount. 
And to the baster they go, or to the tumbler. So we still got a couple more in here. Is that it? Last hole, one more one. I was leaving. There's one right there. That is all, except for the pew that she was still holding. So like I said, we'll... I got a couple more tumblers. I'll give her a few more days. I might have pulled these a little, a little early. And as you can see, little black Moscow guppies are all curious about what's going on in here. And they'll like the extra filtration. Now, let's take the top part here. This top part of the chamber. Try to make sure. That way that keeps the eggs down in there, in between there, and they can't escape. Just kind of gently push it down in there. We're going to go ahead and put this on now. This is the part with the air stone. Basically, the air pushes it down. After you put the air pump on it, it pushes it down into the tumbler and it basically tumbles the eggs like an incubator and simulates the action that's in the mother's mouth, which is all she does. Is if you ever, I wish I would have given you a better shot of the actual incubator, the way she holds her mouth because you can always tell her mouth is bulged and she's constantly moving it like she's eating. But She's just basically doing the same thing this thing is going to do and tumbling the eggs. So. Should be probably about good. And of course my pump got in the water. down underneath. This is supposed to be my workbench, but it's more of a tank bench than anything. A little 29 gallon and into this went down in there, which should be fine. And as you can see, the water starting to, or the air starting to push down in there. You so need to get, just like a sponge filter with the, you know, with the little pipe sticking up out of it. You need to have that down in the water. Push it down a little more. Mm. Yep. I have never tried to stick them in this tank before. It really doesn't look like a 20 long is ideal for this. So luckily, there's some junk over here. Couple twenty sitting right here, and I'll put it in. Those are definitely long enough. This is just a grow out tank for some a few little cherry shrimp mm -hmm. too, and uh, some rainbow endlers. So we gonna close the pump real quick. This axe, you don't want the. Should have thought about that. Uh, let's see. I lost one. Oh, there it is. I lost one of the suction cups, but it's stuck down in here. Alright. Give me just a second before I can move the camera. I'm going to put this in here, and once I got it adjusted, I'll move the camera over here and show you. There's also supposed to be some orange Sakura shrimp that I bought last weekend from a guy. And I 
don't think they're actually going to be in there because he told me they were a quarter inch to a half inch long. And where I went to go pick them up, they were closer to about, and not even an eighth of an inch, probably a sixteenth of an inch. I mean, these were just freshly born. So I went ahead and brought them home and tried to do what I could do to save them, put them in this tank. See if that, I have not seen a single one since I brought them home. It doesn't mean they're not in there. There's just, I haven't seen them. <laughs> Hopefully they will be whenever they grow up a little bit. Like I said, this was just a week or so ago. So. All right, so plug the pump back in. This actually works out better anyway because this, this aquarium here has a little canopy lid. This 20 over here doesn't have one. So. Anyway, and there you go. Some yellow Telus eye eggs tumbling now. You see some baby rainbow antlers in there too. Same thing with that other tank, they won't bother them. So, for some snails. And that's it. That's all there is to stripping a, stripping a female uh, African cichlid. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit the like and subscribe button, and I appreciate it. And I will talk to you guys later. Bye.